Remember the acorn cop from Florida? Well, the guy who was in the back of the squad car that was getting lit up by this cop has spoken out to the media. Let's talk about it. How's everybody doing? My name is Anthony Brian Logan. And today we got to talk a little bit more about the acorn cop from Florida. And to be specific, we're going to talk about the guy who was in the back of the squad car as the cop lit it up because he thought that he had been shot. Now, before I get into the interview, I just want to say a few things. This interview has been out for about two weeks. I did not see it. I don't know how it didn't come across my desk. So I know I'm a little bit late, but I'm just now seeing it and I got to respond. The second thing is let's go back to about a month or two ago where a police officer lit up his own squad car because the sound of an acorn in his mind was gunshots. And he was so nervous, so anxious, he thought that he had also been shot by the acorn. Really crazy. Now, luckily, the suspect in the back of the car was not injured. But, I mean, he could have been. Bullets actually penetrated the vehicle while the guy was inside. Now, the officer resigned, quit, whatever. But there's no criminal charges. And, of course, there's a pending lawsuit. And I hope my man who was being shot at gets all the money that the police can possibly give him in that area because he most certainly deserves it after what happens to him. Now, before I go any further, let's get into the actual news clip. Of course, I will link to everything in the box. If you're on IG, visit a link in the bio, go to the corresponding article on the website. But without further ado, let's go ahead and roll it. We've got an exclusive interview with a Florida man who was shot at nearly two dozen times by law enforcement, not because he was firing at them or running from them, but in fact, while he was detained in the back of a patrol car. Now, I'm going to skip a little bit here because YouTube likes to censor this part. 24-year-old Marquis Jackson was handcuffed and sitting in the back. Do you hear the acorn hit the roof? No, nah, I don't hear no acorn at all. Did you hear Officer Hernandez shout, I've been hit? I didn't hear none of that. You, so you didn't know anything that was going on outside? I ain't do nothing at all, so I'm like, why am I even here right now? So the next thing you know, all I hear is the gunshots. The first one I like hear, like, come through the glass. The second one was like, across my face, I can like, feel the wind, so that's when I ducked. What did you think was happening? They were trying to kill me. When somebody's shooting at you, that's all they could be trying to do is kill you. The incident played out as Deputy Jesse Hernandez and Sergeant Beth Roberts responded to a domestic dispute involving Jackson's girlfriend last November. Police said she it's always like that a domestic dispute girlfriend called the police on you. You might have done something. Maybe you didn't do anything, but it doesn't matter. Now you in a situation you really shouldn't be in. And then the cop, I don't know what he was on. Might have been just anxious. Might have been some kind of drugs. I have no idea. He flips out and then lets off. 22 rounds, 22 rounds. So I presume it wasn't just him shooting. It was his colleague shooting as well. That's crazy. She claimed he stole her car, threatened her, and had a gun silencer. When Jackson arrived, he says he cooperated with officers. And I tell him, like, I don't got no side. Whatever she wants to do, like, let's do it. Because basically I knew, like, I didn't steal her car. I didn't do nothing wrong. They searched me. Searched me a couple times then took me to the car. And right before they put me in the car, they searched me again. Do you have any weapons on you? No. Okay. Well, I'm getting patted down for it. Because you're getting patted down. In a state. So he was searched at least one time. So if he was searched at least once and according to him twice, then the police should know that there's no weapons. So what are you doing lighting the car up? The sheriff says Jackson was only patted down once. And he has on really tight skinny jeans. OK, in a hoodie that's not necessarily super big. So if there's a gun and you're getting patted down at least once, you should be able to find it. I've heard stories of people having guns that were not found, other weapons that are not found. But in this situation, skinny jeans on, you pat it down once and be twice. Come on, man. There's no gun. Jackson claims it was at least twice. He wasn't hurt and was never charged with a crime. An internal investigation found Hernandez's actions violated policy. He resigned, but Roberts was cleared. Neither faced criminal action. What are the images you see that you can't get out of your head? There's a whole lot of guns and glass falling, basically cop cars and sirens, 
I'm hearing noises all the time, stuff like that. Do you think you have PTSD? Most definitely. As an advocate, we want to make sure that we get him uh, the best help that he can. As a black man, I'm enraged. Here go, here go the lawyer, and look, I'm not, even, I'm not mad at the lawyer, not, a, not at all. Hey, get your money. Get all the money, because this was crazy. I mean, absolutely crazy. The guy, whether he is guilty of a crime or not, at a certain point, you're innocent until proven guilty. And I don't think that stealing the car, allegedly, or having a silencer means that you get, you get, you get deleted in the back of a squad car or shot at in the back of a squad car. So regardless of what he may have done or didn't do, the actions that took place are inexcusable. And I most certainly want to get compensated financially. 100%. Yeah, I, look, man, I'm suing the pants off the entire department. I'm getting M's from the situation. DeWitt Lacey represents Jackson and filed a lawsuit against the Okaloosa County Sheriff's Office. Why are you enraged? The fear of this violent or angry black man being loose is what's been used to justify and rationalize the fear. And that is upsetting. That is angry. What do you hope the outcome is to all of this? Uh, accountability. Uh, we want them, and that is the law enforcement community, the sheriff's department, the county, to take this a little more seriously. To not pass this off as something that can be swept under the rug. This could have gone very differently. He could be dead, right? That is a, a likely outcome when you shoot that many bullets into a patrol vehicle and somebody's in there. For CBS Mornings, Jamie Yukis in Los Angeles. Well, he is right. It could be very different. In a statement to CBS News, the Okaloosa County Sheriff say uh, deputies do not engage in the practice of bias-based profiling and are confident race was not a factor in this incident. The sheriff also said Lacey's claims about being swept under the rug are absurd. Deputy Hernandez, the officer who fired the initial shots and rolled around there, said he was hit, declined to comment for this story. Again, he's resigned. It's a good call. I don't think any it's cops happening. watching this think uh, that that guy was mentally fit on that particular yeah. day in that moment yeah. to be an yeah. officer. And it's hard to know, too, without knowing a little bit more about that officer in terms of his, his background. But I mean, the whole racial part, I mean, that, that could be part of it. I don't really know. I think more than anything, he's just... You're just really scared and paranoid to think that a guy who you searched at least once, at least once, possibly twice, produced a gun and was shooting at you from the vehicle when that wasn't happening at all. An acorn. You thought that was the same thing as somebody opening fire. And the craziest part is that you thought you got hit. Oh, I'm hit. You were not hit at all. Not at all. So, yeah, this was just really crazy, really wild overreaction. 22 shots at the guy. Yeah, get your money. 100%. Now, some are going to say, well, you should be also locked up. I mean, you could maybe say that, but at the same time, they, they, somebody could say that he was just nervous and it wasn't intentional. Now, if the guy was to get hit, now we're talking about something different. The guy didn't get hit. So, okay, that's one thing. But if he got hit, you can't just say, oh, well, I'm sorry, and then there not be a criminal penalty behind that. The civil penalty, most certainly, absolutely criminal. It's kind of murky because he wasn't hit. Now, as I close, I want to say this. Uh, shout out to the guy. Uh, hopefully, you're not getting in trouble. I'm not sure if what you were accused of actually happened or not, but if you're not getting in trouble, and if you were, just don't do it anymore. Just stay clean. Be good. And that could have been kind of a wake-up call for you. Because if you, if you had some problems or any kind of issues or not even that, dealing with that woman, if you didn't do anything wrong and the woman set you up, this is a sign from you to stop that relationship. Or if you were involved in crime, stop the crime because God was on your side. Look, the bullets penetrated the vehicle, but you didn't get touched. God was on your side that day for sure. And I think I'll leave that right there for now. And what say you? What's your take on this whole situation? Do you think the guy who was in the car arrested, not resisting, he didn't resist the arrest when they got him in the car. He wasn't resisting in the car. He was like, okay, take me to jail, whatever it is. I'm cool. No resisting. What do you think about his responses and his answers during the interview? How about the lawyer? Um, how about the whole situation? The acorn falling? 
and lighting the car up 22 times, what should be the appropriate consequence of that action? Whatever your thoughts are, let me know in the comments below. And that's all I got to say for this video. If you like what you heard, please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. Peace. Peace. <laughs>